Good evening and beyond Venu, my fond fair friends and family. This is your humble narrator, Diomedes Rouge, here to, well, provide you with an update for What If Deku Was a Bracadios, Part 2. Now, <clears throat> where we last left off, our humble Izuku was, well, Training. He was training his ass off. This was an off day and, well, Mr. Yayorozu has already discovered him, well, training. Two hours into it. He gets ready for work, finishes what he has to do, and takes off. Later on... Miss Momo and her mother wake up to, again, the very same scene of what, you may ask? Simple. Of, de of the training camp, lit up, well, training camp per se, <clears throat> the training area, yes, area, lit up and being used. And it's... Eight o'clock in the morning by now. Momo is highly curious. The mother is just thinking, boys will be boys. And she makes breakfast and such. Now, well, I wouldn't say she makes breakfast. I say she gets someone to make breakfast because they are super rich. And I'm pretty sure they have a good amount of maids who have already made breakfast and such. Maids and or butlers. Depends on, well, really, who's best qualified. Anyways, enough about that. So, they, Momo goes off and investigates, and what does she see? Well, a very sweaty, heavy breathing Izuku, who's currently in the middle of doing, counting his push-ups. <clears throat> 98, 99, 100. Oh, man, that hurt. Oh. Okay, I'm up. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. As he puts a pause on his video, or music video, I should say, and goes over and, well, to a little mini station and prepares himself a protein shake. Why? Because protein. What every good workout needs. Not really, but eh, for some guys who are trying to make a lot of gains, like Izuku currently is, it does help. Now, <clears throat> what's currently going on with our young friend, Izuku, as he turns around and sees Momo? Oh. Hey, Momo. Sorry, uh, <clears throat> doing some intense workout training. Can we, uh, talk again some other time? But you haven't talked to me in a while, Izu. And you don't even call me sis anymore. It's almost as if you're trying to become a stranger. She says with a slight smile on her face. Momo, I'm not trying to become a stranger, I'm just, I'm not in a good place mentally right now. I need, I need to think and prioritize. My brain's wanting me to do one thing, my heart's wanting me to do another. And I'm just trying to figure out what's best for me. Well, you, you could talk about it. I'm always here for you. You know that. Come on. I'm, I may be a little sissy, Momo, but I can always listen to what you say. I know, I know. But some things a guy has to figure out on his own. <clears throat> That's bull. What? 
That's bull. There's nothing you can figure out on your own that you can't figure out with family. You're just being too pig-headed to know better. And she just storms out. You're like, hmm. Mood swings. Oh, she is getting into teenager. Oh, she is getting to be a teenager. And I am too. Oh, boy. This is going to be rough. <clears throat> Yay. Hormones. She's going to get more emotional and I'm going to get more irritated. I swear, whoever came up with designs for human beings really should have left this crap out. Oh, fucking well. Back to training. As he continues on, Momo storms off, enters back into the main part of the mansion, and her mother tries to console her. What's going on? Why do you look so upset? Izu's being an idiot. As usual. Now, now, some things guys just have to work out on their own. They can't really talk with girls. What? Why? It's a guy thing. They're afraid that if they show off their insides a bit too much that we'll, poke, we'll use it against them someday. That's stupid. You'd be surprised. It has come to bite many of other guys in the rear, so to be fair, it's probably just instinct at this point. What? Trust me, all you gotta do is be there for him and he'll eventually come around. You think so? I know so. I mean, your father was like that. Now he comes to me for every little thing. Really? No, but I like to think it's no, but it's still fun to think funny sometimes to think about it. He comes to me a lot more than he used to. Oh, that's good to know. Yeah. Why not try having an intervention with him? Intervention? Yeah, you guys have you guys have all made he's made friends over there at the school and I'm sure they're worried about him. Why don't you call up that Ida girl and that Shota girl? <clears throat> My apologies, yes, Shota is a... Shoto is now Shota, a girl in this one, yes. <laughs> oh, boy. Curse you, follow for a look, for... Teaching me to gender bend. Bastard. Inglorious bastard. I salute you. <clears throat> now... Back to the story. My apologies. They bring him around. They she gives them both a call and explain the situation. Now, what I've neglected is the past experiences Deku has had with them and that's mainly because I try and keep these videos a uh, less than an hour long to not be imposing on y'all. But, again, that does mean I have to kind of blur over some key moments, which I will recover with flashback, flashback, flashback. You know. If you guys like longer videos and such, please let me know in the comments below. If you don't, well, I could keep doing it this way. It doesn't bother me too much. Either way, I'm here to make sure that y'all are happy, as well as I have a fun time recording. Now, they kind of talk back about their previous incidences, in, well, yes, incidences with Izuku. Ida describes it for, Ida comes around and, I'll describe them in detail, why not? <clears throat> Ida, she talks about the first time she met Izuku, how she was trying to be a very good little class representative in junior high school, middle school, if you will. And 
Well, there were a group of, well, what else? Bullies. Messing with and harassing some, well, kids who were weaker, smaller, didn't have as good of quirks as them. Now, the, now Ida normally probably could have handled at least one of them, well, every one of them on their own. But altogether, she didn't have all that much skill. But Izuku, well... In addition to being a Bracadios, one being a creature that loves to fight. And two, well, learning the art of boxing at a relatively young age, looked at this as an opportunity to not only beat people to a bloody pulp, but to do so without having to worry about getting in trouble because he's protecting someone. So, what does he do? He jumps into the fray, of course. He doesn't even have to hybridize or use monsterfication. He just goes at it. Now granted, they aren't using quirks, so after all, Big trouble if you do, especially in a school like this. We'll say that the taller of the three tries to swing tries to swing down hard and heavy to hit poor little Izuku on the head. Izuku just dodges off to the right and go shoves his fist right into the solar plexus. And I mean slam straight into it. So much so that this man this well, not man. <laughs> Slightly older preteen falls to the ground, and well, Izu give boot to the head. Boom, and he's down for the count. Next to the other two, decide to charge Izu. Why? Because they realize, okay, the big guy couldn't handle it. Now two on one. This just brings a smile to Izuku's face, going. All right, switching it up. And he changes his stance, going from a heavy hitting style to more of a da, to more of an agility based style. They come in and they try to tackle him. He just circumvents him by by moving his elbow whenever one tries to leap forward. At him with arms wide open wide. He just takes his arm he just takes the arm, moves it off to the side, gets behind him, and smacks him on the back of their back on their back. Well, slamming one of them on the ground. The other one tries to do the exact same. He dodges to the left and punches straight in the jaw, knocking that one unconscious. Our guy tries to get up. Instead, he's met with boot to the head. And instead of being able to get up, he's met with boot to the head. A third one down. The other two are beginning to look at each other and thinking, well, we did not pick a good day to try this. And then one of them decides to use his quirk. And for this sake, well, let me bring out something special, considering I do not know exactly what quirk this will be. Let's see here. Ah, uh, that's a six on the D20, so this person has an electric quirk. We'll say that it tries to shock Izuku, and <laughs> they send electricity pulsing at him, and Izuku just tanks it. He just goes, <clears throat> Ow! I was gonna let you off with just some bruising, but now I feel like you need a broken bone or two. And this guy goes, Mommy! Or rather, I should say this gal, considering... Quirks, and I already stated previously that females are the ones that have quirks. And Izuku isn't sexist. He believes if a woman hit him, well, she gonna get hit back. Just as hard as she tried to hit him. Why? Because that's only fair. Proper consequences for proper actions and all. Equality. Now... <clears throat> She tries to swing it now. 
He's about to swing at her when Ida catches his arm with hers and says, Hold up, hold up, hold up. What? Can't you see she's cowering? Be like, Oh. To be honest, I didn't really notice. You didn't notice? Yeah, kinda. Kinda got lost in the whole battle frenzy. Kinda happens from time to time. Usually, whenever I spar with people or fight with people, it's with people who can actually take a hit. Not with people who are abusing weak people weaker than them just because they want to feel strong. Pardon me. Sorry about that. Allergy season. Now. He says, uh, uh huh. So, why, uh. So, yeah, we're gonna have to call the principal, Billy. Like, uh, fine, yes, I know, I know. I'll wait here and make sure they don't run off anywhere. You go get the principal since you're faster, and no, I won't beat the crap out of them while you're gone. Just, oh, why, thank you. She takes off. When she comes back with the principal, well... Both of them are being both of them are being sat on by Izuku, the ones who are still conscious. That is. I thought you said you wouldn't beat them up. I didn't, but they tried to run. Now they can't run. What's going on here, Yester Midoriya? Like, oh yeah, this one, that one, that one, that one, and that one tried bullying that one. I stopped it. How? By beating the ever-loving crap out of them. Mr. Midoriya, that language is not allowed here. Well, but bullying is. Uh, no, bullying is obviously not allowed. But violence is not allowed either. But protection of people is, correct? Protection? I, I protected this person, as well as her, because she was about to be beaten up by these folks. And I made sure that neither of them got beaten up. Uh-huh. Mr. Midoriya, you're trying to cross a very dangerous line here. No, 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 sir. No, 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 no. I'm not trying to cross any line. I was just acting within my civil duties as a fellow student of the school to make sure no disgrace fell upon this great school or its name. After all... It would be a shame if people were to find out that bullying were being tolerated here for months at a time and the faculty did nothing about it and then expelled a student who finally stood up against it. And then when a student finally stood up against it and was about to be attacked and had to be defended by another student, that that student, that the one defending them both, wind up getting expelled because he was a bit enthusiastic about defending them. I mean, that would just look terrible on the school's record, wouldn't you think, sir? Like, you're playing a dangerous game, Mr. Midoriya. Oh, maybe, sir, maybe. But at least I like doing my job. Unlike some people around here, as Izuku just kind of picks up his school bag and walks off. I hate that boy. And in case you're wondering why he's acting like this or why he would even say that, Izuku's very cocky in this one. Uh, I wouldn't say very, but he feels a lot more confident and he has a pretty high IQ. So you put both of those together, and you wind up with someone who feels relatively cocky when he's dealing with someone he knows is dumber than him. And especially if he's, that person's already antagonistic towards him. Ida just runs up to Izuku being like, Why did you go that far? Eh, felt like it. Not to mention the sheer fact I don't like the idea of a girl getting hurt. So, next time, try and learn how to fight before you encounter multiple idiots. Otherwise, that pretty little face of yours is going to get really messed up as he flicks her in the forehead and walks off. Like, wait, what? 
Ida gets a little red faced and carrying on. Next was Shoda's turn. And we'll say that Shoda, well, how they met up was <clears throat> this is around elementary after the whole facial scarring incident. Yes, Endeavor's female in this, and yes, Ray would be male in this. And I wouldn't say a f the scar would be from a burn, or in their, her case, freezer burn, considering if you know the actual thing, whenever the pot of water was placed upon the head, the frost immediately reacted, and yeah. Anyways, <clears throat> I would say that the scar was more likely caused by, well, considering how men are, uh, more blunt means. Not saying he took the kettle and did anything, but more along barehanded. Because when men lash out, they rarely go for that type of treatment, while women are more planned and executive, execute things fairly, very methodically. Meanwhile, guys are a bit more flash in the pan. <sighs> Spark of excitement, you know. We do crazy shit for crazy shit's sake at occasions. And in the heat of a moment, well, less likely to grab a pan, grab a pan of boiling hot water and toss on your face and more likely just to punch in the face. And in this case, that's exactly what happened. Ray knew he could never beat the crap out of Endeavor, but he knew he could get away from her. Because... Yeah, Endeavor's still abusive in this. Like, Ray just felt like a used piece of slab at this point. And, yeah, he's, uh... He didn't feel happy about it whatsoever. And so he kinda snapped. And, well, punched Shoda. And doing that, well... Wind up getting arrested, and so Shoda's got a bit of a scar on her cheek, and from the where the punch landed, nothing too big, no giant burn, but yes. This is after that whole event, and she gets picked at by other girls and such for her scar and all that. How they call her the how they they usually call her ugly and. Scarface and la 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 la. You know, girls can be cruel. Girls can be very cruel. But then again, boys can be cruel too. We're all cruel. Humans suck. Anyways, enough about that. Yeah. So she gets irritated one day and she's really about to let loose. With some, well, frost. Let the ice begin to throw, begin to ice, ice them all. <laughs> and, uh, <clears throat> that's whenever Izuku is about to step in and just goes, Wow, that's all you really gotta say? What? This has nothing to do with you, monster boy. Be like, oh, wow, I haven't heard that one before. You got anything else there, snotty face? What? Oh, I'm sorry. I just thought that's what your friends called you, considering you got a booger hanging from your nose. What? I do not? She begins to rub her nose frantically. Oh, yeah, that's right. My bad. It's just because your nose is turned up so big like a pig, I couldn't really see. I could just see down in there. My bad. Uh, uh, she takes off crying because this is elementary school. That's a pretty harsh insult. Hey, you jerk. That's not nice. Oh, and the way you're treating her is nice. She's got a small little scar on her face. What do you got, Pickle? What do you got, Freckle Face? Hmm? What, is this connected dot program we got going on here? Here, let me help you out. Just takes out a pin and just goes... Da -da 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 See, look, I made a picture. She takes off running too. 
Oh, and don't even get me started on you. Boom! Takes off. Don't let others mess with you just because you got them. Hey, just because you look different, don't let others mess with you. It's not a big deal. Besides, compared to some of the scars I've seen, <laughs> that's nothing. It's like a little cut. You should be feel, you should feel great about it. it. Means you got through. You means you lived through whatever dealt that to you and, well, survived. And you got the mark to show for it. So no matter what, don't let ours define what you're worth. Hope they figure that out the hard way. As well, he gets begins to get yelled at by the teacher. Be like, don't worry, I got this. Yeah, he was grounded for like three weeks after that. And we already know how she, they, how Momo and him met. You know, if you don't remember that one, watch part zero, damn it. Anyways. <clears throat> after talking about that whole thing, they realized, well, they really didn't talk much about how they met with each other. They just started really hanging around and that was that. They should talk more often, and how Izuku kind of needs help. What kind of help? Ida, Ida asks. Well, he's been acting kind of weird, Momo replies. He's trying to close himself off from everyone. He's doing everything he can to keep his mind off the fact his dad died. His dad died? Shota responds. How? You didn't know? No, they both, both Ida and Shota say. No, we had no idea. I thought I would have told y'all. He hasn't said a word. He just comes to school and stays quiet, sleeps through the classes. He sleeps through the classes? Yeah. He sleeps through the classes and he still is getting bees. Like, yeah. Well, don't you know, he's actually very intelligent. He said if he really wanted to, he could probably get A's, but he fears if he puts that much... He fears that if he actually puts any effort into it, they might actually start suspecting something. Uh, suspecting what? I don't know, it just... That's what he said. Then he quickly shut his mouth. Anyway, so his dad died? And he didn't tell us? Yeah, he died a while, a little bit ago. He was murdered in prison. No way. Yeah, you didn't know? No idea. Okay, that's it. We're going to talk with him. Be like, yeah, come on over. And within about a few 30 minutes, Izugu hears the telltale clunk, clunk. Of car doors shutting, and then the telltale. And I would say yes, he can hear this because right now this has been another thirty minutes. He's taken a pause from his training. He's drinking, and with Brackadia hearing, which if any hunter here is available, yeah, it's uh, it's pretty darn accurate. It's pretty darn acute. Not very acute, like the Nergigantes, but it's pretty darn acute. And, oh boy! Does he not like the sound of what he's hearing? Because now he hears not one, not two, but three sets of footprints walking up to the training area. He's going, oh, I have a boy, do I suddenly feel like the devil's walked over my grave? As he quickly turns around and the door flies open. Hi, got uh, hey girls, uh, how's it? Shut up! Mm. That's rude. Shut up. Yeah. Okay. Now we need to talk. Um. Oh, shut up! Mm. That's not how talking. Shut up. Okay. As he just sits down in a chair and proceeds to wait. 
all three of them give an individual ass-chewing to him verbally. Just tear into this poor son of a bitch. And at the end of it, they say, now you can speak. And he replies with, about time. Listen, I understand all of you are worried about me, but... I work things out best on my own. I need training. I need physical activity. I don't need heartfelt, talky, mushy, mushy bullshit. I prefer to talk with my fists, not with my mouth. I do not think talking about my feelings would be helpful. Have you ever tried it? No! Maybe you should try it. I... No. Izuku, try it, Ido says. Be like, No! Try it, Izuku. Or... Or what? Well... As... Well, Todoroki begins to... Freeze the room a little bit. Be like... You wouldn't dare. Oh, yes. I remember your little weakness. You know that was just gonna piss me off. True, but unlike you, I'm not afraid of hurting others. I'm not afraid of hurting you to help you. I'm not afraid of hurting you. On the other hand, you, <laughs> you're very scared of hurting me. Because you don't want to hurt me. You don't want to hurt anyone. So quit the nonsense about you talking better with your fists than you do with your mouth. And you're going to sit down, and you're going to open up, and you're going to be open about everything that you want to talk about. And if you need to cry, we'll be here. But, yeah, we're going to break through that exterior of yours one way or another. So you really don't have a choice in the matter. Oh, you want to bet? What's that supposed to mean? As he begins to stand up. You see, ladies, there's one thing about your plan that you very well forgot. Oh, and what's that? Simple. A bracadios, such as myself, has other means of moving besides on land. For instance, monstrification, as he transforms into the full Bracadius. We can go underground, as he proceeds to dig like a son of a bitch, plowing his fist into the ground, and in about 10 seconds, he is completely gone. What the? Uh, they try to stop him, but they're mostly gobsmacked and stunned for the first eight. And by the time they actually begin to move, well, his tail's already beginning to go down. Why don't they fall? Simple. It's not a direct tunnel. It's more like he's pounding his way through the earth, and then whatever earth is left piles falls in on itself. Closing up the same tunnel that he would proceed to use. That little bastard. Um. How are we going to explain this to my mother? I don't know. But the real question is, where is he going to go? I don't know. I think we're in trouble. Oh, yeah. We're definitely in trouble. But I think he's going to be in worse. And then we proceed to where Izuku is. I can't believe those idiotic morons think I need to talk. Fuck talking. I need a fight. I need a real fight. You know what? Screw being a nice guy. Screw all of it. My dad wasn't a nice guy. Hell, he was known as Devastation. <laughs> That's not a nice guy name. That's not a nice guy name at all. I mean, yes, he was a vigilante, but vigilantes aren't nice guys. 
as he proceeds to dig further and further and further and further. And finally, find a sewer top, a uh, sewer drain. Ah, human eyes. Oh, that's better. <clears throat> now, what was it? And he proceeds to kind of go around town in his training gear. He walks for a little bit and he comes across some, well, back alley thugs. Because why? Yes, why? That's why. They think about, they look at his, at him and be like, Oh, what do we got here? One of them jogger boys, huh? Don't ask me why he has that accent. I just felt like giving it to him, and I can't do a Japanese tough guy accent, so cut me some slack. The humble narrator is still humble, but he is a terrible at, well, doing Japanese accents. Mostly they sound racist. I will not do them. Unless asked. And even then, only as a joke. Proceeding. <clears throat> oh, we got a tough guy here, huh? Look at you all in that training gear and all that stuff. Huh? You think you're a tough boy? No, not especially. But I'm very much, but I guarantee I'm tougher than any of you. It's like, oh, is that so? Why don't you come down here and prove it, big man? And as Azuku just smiles away and puts his hands in his pocket as he just walks down the alley. Ten seconds later, all four of those guys get sent flying out of the alley. Izuku just walks up behind him and says, I'll take this and this and this. As he takes about 20 bucks each out of their wallets. Not the entire amount in their wallets, but 20 bucks a piece. Hmm, that should be more than worth my time. Thank you guys. As he just proceeds to walk off. Oh, that felt good. I see why Dad did this. Ah, oh, no wonder Dad was a vigilante. This shit's awesome. The rush, the high, the justice. Ah. Oh. As he keeps on wandering, and he goes and finds this, well, this back alley little fight club that's going down. Or at least the entrance to one. He hears the people inside and just wanders across. Bouncer kind of looks at him and goes like, You one of the new fighters? Nah. No, not at all. Just wandering. Uh-huh. Well, 60 bucks entry. Hmm. All right. Might as well see what the whole commotion's about. As he hands over $60 and walks on in. Like, hmm, this place ain't too shabby. Nice, nice, good acoustics as he just hears. As he, hear, as he hears the telltale roaring and a roar of the crowd and everything just going down. And in this corner, we have the reigning champ, the Titanic T-Rex, Anjanath. And in this corner, we have the great and almighty Jack Ross. Let the fight begin. As they both the challengers just charge up and, well, full monster eyes in the ring and try and beat the crap out of each other. As we all know from, well, anyone here who has played Monster Hunter World would know, you can pretty much tell where this conflict's gonna go. Great Jaggers gets picked up and then tossed. Why? Because he, he, he's small. He not that big a threat. He just acts like he is. He's usually wrong place, wrong time, and this place is no different. So yeah, he gets picked up and shoink. Pardon me one moment. Shoink down the ring. 
Is there any challenger that would dare face the great and mighty Angelath in this area? Come on, it'll take any challenger, anyone. All you need is 20 bucks entry. Hmm. Well, you know what? Huh. Deku takes out 20 bucks and holds it in his hand and tosses it up in the air. And then Telltale hybridizes as he, well, half transforms into, well, the half Bracadillas form as he catches the $20 bill back in his in between his fingers. 20 bucks, right? Yes. 20 bucks is all you need, my young friend. All right. Here you go. Let's make sure this is a good fight. What do I get if I win? <laughs> what do I get when I win? Ah, if you win, you'll get $5,000. That's it? That's it? Uh, sir, this is quite the sum, especially for someone of your age. <laughs> well, when I win, we can see about talking better terms. You mean, if you win, there's the big bad Anjanath man walks up. We'll see this man's about 6'2", around 200 pounds, and just kind of walks up, just be like, you mean... If you win, Deku just stares up at him. Like, oh, no, 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 no. It's not an if. It's a win. Oh, you're going to be fun. Huh. Uh, I don't know about you, though. Hybridize. As, well, the Anjanath half transforms. The Anjanath's using just raw, savage power. He's not really a trained fighter. He's just throwing his weight around to see where it'll make an impact. Izuku sees this and just goes, <laughs> pathetic. As he kind of dodges around and switches it up into a more slugger form. He just goes, all right, you want to try and hit hard? I'll show you what hitting hard's really all about. And he just... Boom! Right in the jaw. Boom! 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 Three blows right to the center, right to the center chest. Boom! One right underneath the jaw. And for each blow he lands, he leaves a trail of slime. And we all know what the Bracadillo slime does as he jumps back a good two feet and just goes. Boom! They all, all the slime detonates at one time, sending the Anjanath man flying into the turnbuckle. Boom! And then onto the mat. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Monsterfication. You really, as the Anjanath man turns, well, into an Anjanath. And gets all big and bad and, well, you really think you can mess with me? I'm the motherfucking T-Rex around here. I'm going to chew you up and spit you. Boom! Right as he says, right as he's about to finish that sentence, Izuku just jumps up in his hybridized state and punches him square below the jaw. And then he just goes, monsterfication. And, well, transforms into the Bracadios. As he lands, he does a tail swipe to knock out the Anjanath's feet. Followed up by several boom, 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 boom. Thunderous blows to the chest, body, and frame of the Anjanath. And he can hear quite a few bones cracking underneath this pressure. And I do mean cracking. Mm. When he feels like he's had enough, he give, he just looks at him straight in that eye and just says, huh. You may be the motherfucking T-Rex, 
but I'm the goddamn Bracadius. As he pulls back his head and boom, slams in with that horn. He doesn't kill the man, no, he just renders him unconscious. And I'd say he's got enough control over his slime to where he can not let it ooze out in certain cases, and this would be the one of them. You know, kind of conserve that for later. He realizes this guy ain't that big of a threat. He powers down and just goes, Oh, oh, that felt nice. As people are recording this and looking at that going, Holy shit! Be like, all right, there's my money. Where's my money? Come on. You said five grand. Hand it over. All right, kid. All right. As they hand over the five thousand dollars, and he just goes like, ah. you know, I did scoff at it earlier, but that's actually a pretty darn good amount. Now that I get a solid look at it, thank you for the business. You're quite cocky, aren't you, kid? Yeah. Mm, maybe. Or maybe I just know what I'm worth. And maybe I really know, in reality, that you don't have enough to afford me for long term. So you might as well cancel that little idea in your head. Mm -hmm. what, what do you mean? <laughs> You really think I'm stupid enough not to fall for that? To fall for that, hmm? I come in, beat your best man. Then, beat the so-called champion here. And then, after I beat the so-called champion, you try and sign me up for a bigger as your new champion, in which case I have to retain my title and all that. Well... Uh, yeah, no. I'm crazy, not stupid. I'll take the money and go. <laughs> Thanks. This was fun, though. Oh, and, uh... Oh, and, uh... <laughs> here's 20 for your troubles. You little brat. As Azuku kind of walks out the building... He goes around and he just decides, you know what, I'm actually getting pretty hungry, and I could use a change of clothes. Hmm. What does he do? He goes to a strip mall and he buys a new set of clothes, some blue jean pants, leather jacket, some thick shoes, and just kind of walks around and be like, hmm. You know, I should style. I should walk walk around like this more often. This feels nice. Hmm. Still got a few grand. Still got over four grand on me. Still got over four grand on me. What the hell am I gonna do? Hmm. All right. Still hungry. Sushi. I haven't had a cheat day in a while. And he goes off and well eats his fill of sushi. He was like. Ah, uh, pardon me. Ah, uh, that was good. Ah, uh, I wonder how the girls are doing. I did kind of leave like a jerk, didn't I? Well, they did push me, he thinks in his head, really. Yeah, they pushed me a lot. But they were worried about me. Maybe I should go apologize. Mm. Maybe. Like, hmm. Kind of looks over at a dealership and be like, hmm, maybe one day I'll get myself a motorcycle. <laughs> Where was I thinking again? Oh, right, right, right. Um, Momo. Yeah, little sis. God. 
Oh, man. I wonder how mom and them are reacting. Oh, no, knowing mom, she's panicked. Oh, knowing mom, she's panicked. She's panicked, she's panicked. What have I done? I've made her. Oh, no, why didn't I think of that sooner? And right as soon as he thinks that, whoo! Here are the police sirens. Oh, shit. As he turns around and sees... <laughs> Not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, but seven police cars. Seven. Yes, I know I missed six, but that would just made the joke longer. Seven police cars and in limousine. He goes like, hair. Oh yeah, mom was definitely worried. I am going to get my butt chewed out again. Four times in a row today. I am not going to be happy about this. As he sees all the girls walk out, including the mother, be like, Miss Yayorozu, who he calls Ma, because he's been around her long enough. Eh, actually, no. Auntie. He's like, I ticked off Auntie. Like, oh no, I made her panic. He like, she walks over and be like, and is like, Izu, dear. Yes, Auntie? We need to go and have a talk. I'm not gonna like this talk, am I? She just gives him the little evil, the little narrow height smile with the dark shadow ominous presence behind her, sort of feel like a... No. No, you're not. Yes, Auntie? As he just kind of cowers into the limousine. And she says, thank you for all your hard work, officers. And thank you for tracking down my little nephew. I am so happy that he wasn't hurt. It says, anytime, Miss Yairozu. As they all proceed to take off again. And then the rest of them get in the limousine as Zuku's on the opposite end. going Kind of cowering in fear. Just going... I, in his mind, just thinking, I have severely fucked up. I have beyond severely fucked up. I forgot that I made her worry. Oh, God, how badly did I fuck up. <laughs> I was so caught up in the whole idea of actually going off and doing things, I forgot the critical thing. Make sure the mother bear don't worry. Oh, no. And so begins the 30-minute pre-tongue lashing in the car ride home. And then the hour-long tongue lashing that he receives after he gets home. I'm not going to bore you with the details because then we'll be sitting here for an hour. And look at that. I'm actually getting close to an hour as it is. Oh, well, let this be a longer one. I don't mind. And I hope y'all don't either. As I said, if y'all do, let me know in the comments below. If you don't, let me know in the comments below. It's kind of the only way I talk with you guys. So. They proceed to take care of that he gets grounded again for... Five weeks this time. He's only allowed to go home, school, and yeah, that's about it. He's not even allowed to go out into the gym anymore unless he's supervised for, well, five weeks. And he will be helping repair the flooring. So, yes, Auntie. Now. He goes and he sits down and he, and she says, oh, and you're also coming to a formal dinner. Be like, what? Yes, formal dinner party. You're going to wear your tuxedo. You're going to look nice. You're going to comb your hair back and you're going to be presentable. Be like, I don't like formal dinner parties. Don't care. You're doing it. But no buts. Normally I would let you off, but you're grounded. So you kind of have no choice in the matter. Yes, Auntie. 
as the girls kind of feel bad and everything. Oh, mo 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 mo. You're not off scot free either. Like what? I told y'all to have an intervention. Yes. So this is partially my fault. However, I didn't tell y'all to go and drive him off. I, 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 we didn't mean to. We did what you said. Push harder. Yes, you did. And you pushed him. Right out the door. Uh, uh, it's not our fault. He took it that way. <sighs> True. But... I need you to contact all of your, both of your parents and let them know what happened. They will talk to you how they will talk to you. Deal with you how they deal with you. And I will deal with you personally, Momo. Oh no. Oh yes. We have to talk. Pardon me one moment. Sorry, on exercise machine had to switch it over. And yes, I do this on exercise machine. Why? Because it makes me feel better. No, it's not on high speed. I'd be nuts if I did so. <laughs> Just light walking on treadmill. Helps me think. So yes. She talks with him and... Essentially... Makes it to where she talks with Momo. Basically makes it to where she has to go up and apologize to Izuku... She does so. <sighs> Listen, bro, I'm sorry. I didn't know you would react that way. <sighs> to be fair, neither did I. Kind of not thinking there. More heart took over than brain. And I just went with my gut. And my gut told me, well, if they're going to try and imprison me, run. Needless to say, after I ran, I got imprisoned more. Where did you get the strange clothes? Did you have a set laid out for you? Uh, no, I kind of bought them. Bought them? But you didn't bring your wallet. How did you get the money to... I kind of won it. Won it? Yeah. How did you win? You fought, didn't you? Yeah. What? No, 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 no. Got lucky jackpot at one of the stands. Be like, bull, you didn't get a lucky jackpot one of the stands. You have terrible luck. You fought. It's one of the few things you're very good at that would get you money that quickly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm. Don't tell Auntie. Be like, oh, I won't. On three conditions. <clears throat> you little extortionist. Yes. Fine. What are the three conditions? One, you have to go to the formal party we're going to. <gasps> what? Yes, we're going to a formal party later, and you have to come. Be like, deal. Really? I thought I would have to drag you along further than that. Be like, in his mind, he's thinking, Okay, I'm glad you didn't hear that whenever Mom was talking about it. Good! I get to kill two birds with the price of one stone! Okay. Alright. Two. You're no longer allowed to call me Momo. What? That's right. You're no longer allowed to call me Momo. Okay, what am I supposed to call you? Sister. Or sissy. Be like... Really? You, you want me to call you that? You used to do it all the time. Yes, when we were kids. I'm 15. You're 15. Or, well, 14 going on 15. It's kind of awkward. Do you know, call you sissy or sister like that? Be like, you know. Like, nope, nope, nope. You're not allowed to do that. Be like, mm, fine. Fine. And third, simple. You have to buy me something. Like, you could buy yourself whatever you want, Momo. Hell, you can create most things you want. True, but I want you to buy me something. Has to be something pretty. Be like, <clears throat> Is that all, your highness? Indeed. Be like, hmm. I gotta admit, you'll fit in well with your family. 
I gotta admit, you fit in well with this family. So do you, little bro. So do you, big bro. You just don't realize it yet. You're like, <clears throat> and that, my friends, is where I'm gonna end it off here. Yes, I know this is primarily filler, but at least it gives you a bit more ease of mind and allows you to laugh a bit more. And after the darkness I showed you earlier, the least I could do, do is shine upon you a wee bit of light. This has been your humble narrator, Diomedes Rouge. And this will be me bidding you au revoir.